Hey there everyone, Hatesh here, your programming friend from YouTube and make sure you hit that subscribe button on my YouTube channel because I'm about to post a lot of videos. In the past also I have posted tons of videos but we're gonna get started again with much more intensity. So let's move on and talk about MongoDB. First and foremost thing, have patience my dear friend because all those who can learn anything, the first essential thing is patience. I know you are in a hurry to learn everything quickly, but that's not how things works. First, we need to go through with the basics, deep understanding, and then we're gonna be building up something, of course. So let's get started with the MongoDB. The goal of this video is really simple. We want to understand the mechanism of how the MongoDB actually works. And if you are coming up from anything like MySQL or any kind of relational databases, then obviously it's a little bit change for you and you need to understand the mindset here. So first and foremost that you need to understand is we don't have that kind of normalization that we have in the relational databases as in MongoDB. The whole power and the whole idea of MongoDB is simply that there is no schema at all. And you'll be hearing this word quite a lot, two, th two sentences here. One, there is no schema. And second, MongoDB is a collection of documents. I will bring up this topic again into the course where we will understand this through the diagrams as well. But what does it mean when I say collection of documents? Right now, the only thing that I want you to understand that you have so much of flexibility in MongoDB. There are no strict tables, but surely it can be. You can implement strict tables, but as of default, there are no strict tables. What does that mean? Simply means the MongoDB actually focuses on storing everything together. While if you're coming up from the relational databases, that's not the case. In relational databases, we put everything into its own tables, and these tables have certain relation with each other, and then we pull up the data. MongoDB is almost opposite of that. MongoDB believes in storing everything at one place, in just one document. Surely there are multiple documents, but moreover, the focus is on simply storing everything in one document. Now what it allows us is it may look like a gigantic object or looks like a bit messy thing, but pulling up the data is absolutely fast. In fact, I would say ridiculously fast in MongoDB. Have a look on this diagram here. So simply we can see that first and foremost, again, no schema means there can be schema, like you want certain fields to be absolutely there. Surely we can make an implementation there of that way, but this is the default one. For example, have a look here. So we can see we have got an ID field, we have got a name field and course field. So that's our, your default field. But later on your application required that, hey, we want to add a certain field. In the relational databases, if you want to have certain things like this, then surely it is a problem because you have to modify the entire structure of your database. In here, that's not the case. Whenever you like, you can add a new field. For example, here we have added a new field which says age 99. Surely that's not my real age, but definitely you can add certain more field. Similarly, just like the way you can add certain fields, you can omit certain fields. Again, it heavily depends on the implementation of what you are trying to do. Certainly, restrictions can be achieved, but the flexibility is the whole idea with the MongoDB. And don't worry, I'll walk you through with each and everything that how these restrictions can be applied and how you can have the flexibility whenever you want to have. Again, I would like to repeat my syntax here, which says MongoDB usually focus on collection of documents. Now that's up clear up. Now, one more thing I would like to point out is MongoDB is absolutely amazing when you have heavy read and write applications. For example, let's just say there is any application which sends uh, some data to the database every second or maybe every minute back and forth, then in these certain cases, MongoDB is absolutely amazing. Because read and write operation in MongoDB is very less in the cost as compared to relational databases. So if you are making a food delivery app where you have to track the user every single second and throw that tracking onto the user, it is absolutely fast and there can be hundreds of such implementations. So uh, that's all clear up. Now let's focus on the diagram. And I would really appreciate if you can show some love for this diagram in the comment section because it took me a little bit while here to make this diagram. First, let me give you a brief idea what that is. The bottom green line that you see is actually file. I know that's not a unique or a good color that I've picked up, but just assume this is the actual file. File like your HTML file maybe your SQL file, it's just a file for computers, okay? Now let's move on to the top, so how does it work? Okay, 
So first and foremost, we see a mobile and web. This is the final layer where most of the people uses MongoDB. The line here actually depletes, uh, simply shows that this is the final abstraction layer for web and mobile. Now with the mobile application, I, I would like to introduce uh, everything here like a React, Flutter, uh, maybe Android default application or native application or iOS or anything else that you are building. For the web, anything that works on browser or anything like even on the desktop application. So this is your abstraction layer. This is where everything happens. Below that comes up the magical part. Now how you want to place up anything into the MongoDB has to go through some channel and that channel depends on how the implementation is working. And by the way, all of these are absolutely fine channel. Now since MongoDB can interact with through the drivers using C++, using Java, using JavaScript. Yes, I know some of you said in the previous video, you said wrong Java. There. No, my dear friend, I said absolutely right. MongoDB can work with Java as well and with JavaScript as well. Okay, so moving forward. Now here are a couple of implementation that I have tried to show you. Now the first and the one which we'll be using far later into the course is going to be the node implementation. Don't worry, you don't need to know anything about node yet. Uh, I will walk you through about these steps. Now node is basically the big block which interacts with the Mongo server. But internally there is, uh, there is an extra abstraction layer which is an ORM. We will talk about the ORM later on but there is just a, a thing which we will be using known as Mongoose. Mongo's is really famous and with the node implementation you'll see in the industry standards it is being used quite a lot that why that is why I have picked it up. Mongo's is popular but it's not the only one there are others as well. So this is going to be one of the implementation that we are have we are having. Now it's not like this is the only one we have exactly similar kind of situation for Java we have exactly similar kind of situation for Ruby but in Ruby we don't call it Mongoose or maybe there are some other things but usually the layer exactly works like this and then it talks directly to MongoDB server. Now here is a quick thing whenever we work with the MongoDB server working with that directly can be a little bit challenging sometimes because the API through which we directly link with these Mongo server and our application, maybe Node, maybe JavaScript, can be a little bit tricky. Now that tricky thing is resolved by this Mongoose. Mongoose is just an, a way through which it makes handling those API easier for us. That's it, nothing else. If you just completely omit the Mongoose, surely you can work directly server but it makes our life much more easier that's why we use mongoose now it's not like everybody uses mongo there is a direct way for our database administrators to work with mongodb for them they don't need an understanding of mongoose or node.js or anything at all because they are just managing the server how things should be and how things should not be in that case they can directly use a shell access of mongodb now the shell access is pretty powerful and initially we will be working with the shell the best part about working with the shell is you can move from the shell into any programming language. Let's just say your interest is not with Node and uh, any other uh, Mongoose. Surely exactly same implementation of shell can be seen into Python. And in fact, I will walk you through some of the defaults of uh, working through with the Python or Ruby or C++ or anything else at all. So initially we will be going through with the shell and then we'll move on to Mongoose and uh, Node. Now, uh, just this is the implementation that yes, everything at the end of the day uh, implements and interacts with the MongoDB server. And there is one more layer, uh, which I will talk in the future videos. And that layer is simply, uh, let me just go through, uh, there we go. In the MongoDB server, actually everything, whether that's a database or an HTML file is being written in just a plain simple file. The engine that does it for us and store everything into the schema and structure that we need is known as Wired Tiger Storage Engine. This is the default storage engine for MongoDB. Surely it is changeable, but most of the time, in fact, 95% of the time when you are working or building anything at all, you don't care about how your database is storing your files. In some cases, you might worry about that, but in most cases, you don't. You simply just go through with MongoDB and you say, hey, somebody saves it. Now, what are the way of saving it into the file? You don't worry about it at all. 
uh, just to keep in mind it is always a good practice to understand everything into thorough depth and when in the interviews somebody says hey what is the server engine that mongodb uses as default you can quickly come up and say hey that's a wired uh, tiger storage engine that is being used so just for your knowledge purpose now one more quick thing i would like to discuss here now when we touch the mongodb server i would like to give you some tips and tricks because these are essential when you're working with databases touching anything in the database is a tricky operation and we always like to avoid it in case we have to touch it we just do it in one go i will talk about it more in the upcoming videos and also we need to talk about one more guy which i have discussed in the previous video which was maka so where is this maka gonna come up into this picture it is going to come we need to zoom into this uh, mongodb uh, diagram quite a lot in the upcoming videos but i think we should keep the things short and sweet so that's it how does the mongodb work this is exactly how it works and we are going to learn a little bit more about the implementation of maka and some of the more crucial details of mongodb in the upcoming videos i hope you are enjoying this entire series and in case you are enjoying show some love in the comment section and uh, just encourage me to continue this series more further that's it for this video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on my YouTube channel and don't forget to visit learncodeonline.in.